Hey, what's up guys? Uh, I'm really excited to show you a project that I've been working on for a while now. I've been working on it for like the last uh, six, seven months now. Um, I've been testing and uh, flying it through the fall here, and I'm kind of finally ready to show you guys what I've been working on. Um, you guys probably already know what it is from the title. It's an electric powered paraglider. And uh, you guys might be asking like, well, there's already some like really good uh, paragliders on the market, but uh, electric has some really good advantages over gas. Here's like some of the biggest reasons why. I think electric's way better and why I decided to design and build my own. The number one biggest reason why I decided to do it is uh, just ease of use. So how easy is it to just kind of get up in the air, fly around and land? So the biggest thing that kind of contributes to ease of use is how lightweight it is. So if you have a really heavy machine, it's just harder to take off and say you have a failed takeoff, the next takeoff's even way harder than that. It's just easier to kind of finesse the wing above your head if your machine is lighter on your back. So with this thing only coming in at 29 pounds, it's definitely by far the lightest frame motor combination on the market. You guys be like, oh, that's without batteries. Yeah, that's true. But if we look at a little cheat sheet here, we'll kind of compare it to some other frames on the market. Um, so the Air Conception 130, it's definitely probably the lightest frame on the market currently, and it's coming in at uh, 44 pounds. And then the Carbon Fiber Scout, uh, another very popular frame, uh, 57 pounds, and the Fresh Breeze Seminini is coming at 62 pounds. And that's all without gas. So now those numbers are compared with gas. Um, so that Air Conception 130, 44 pounds turned to 64 pounds. And that uh, Carbon Fiber Scout turns into 78 pounds, like ready to fly. And you're always gonna have it, you're gonna fill it up with gas, of course. Maybe not all the way, but still it's a pretty significant amount of weight. I compared that to the EPPG or Electric Powered Paraglider. Uh, you can have anything between 39 pounds and 59 pounds. So that 39 pounds is kind of with the lighter weight battery pack on there. And uh, if you just want to fly, say you got like right now, you got 20 minutes till sunset, it's perfect because you just take it out of your car, unfold it, and you're ready to fly. And then if you want to fly again, you can just throw more packs on there. But it's super, super lightweight uh, compared to the other frames. And then uh, if you want to throw uh, a little bit more weight and you want to fly for a little bit longer, then you can go that a little bit heavier route. It's still lighter than everything else, but uh, you'll get 40 minutes of flight time. The next thing that kind of goes along with ease of use is basically the instant power uh, electric provides. It's almost too instant. We actually had to kind of throttle it down a little bit just because it was too touchy and too powerful. But uh, even with the throttle down, it's super, super nice. And the other thing is it's because it's electric, there's no starting the motor, there's no cranking on it. And if you have an instructor that's like training you, uh, you can kind of communicate really easily no need for earplugs or anything like that and when you're just kind of learning to taxi slash take off uh, that process is a lot easier because you can communicate without any comms or anything like that when you're up in the air flying around you are probably gonna want comms but just that uh, taxing area is a lot easier to do and it saves yours the second biggest reason why I decided to design and uh, make my own PPG here is transportation transportation is huge because uh, the easier it is to transport the more likely you are gonna fly and with this thing, it folds up in a minute. It requires no tools at all uh, versus conventional gas paragliders. They do break down, it, it takes a while. And uh, even when you do break them down, you still have gas and fumes and stuff like that. You can't put that in the back of your car if you wanted to. Uh, so with this, you don't need like a trailer or your truck to put it in. And a lot of people don't have a place to store it. This way, this solves all the problems like that. And it just has a nice little carry handle. You throw it in the back of your car and you're good to go. Um, if you see a cool spot to fly on your way home from work and it's just in the back of your car, it's not taking up a lot of room, take up a seat or two, uh, you're like, oh, that's a sweet, sweet spot to fly and you just take it out, unfold it, you got a, f a little bit of time before sunset and you're ready to go. So the final major reason that kind of pushed me over the edge to go ahead and design and uh, build this thing is cost. Um, the initial cost and the, the overall maintenance cost. So if we look at initial cost off the bat, um, electric's already a cheaper, so if you want to get just a conventional gas paraglider on the market right now, it's going to run you anywhere between seven to ten grand new. And even if you get a used one, you still have to worry about maintenance. But this thing, uh, it's going to cost about two grand uh, to three grand maybe tops if you get real high end stuff. Um, but maintenance is kind of like the bigger issue here. So I've had a lot of like gas paragliders and stuff like that, and you have to rebuild the engines every hundred hours, or you get holes in it. We've had pull starters break. And then like another just big, like simple reason kind of explains the difference is just props. So with this, uh, just a wooden prop like this, it's cost like 20 bucks to replace that. But versus conventional paraglider props, it's gonna cost you about like $500 to replace a prop. Say you have a little, you land a little bit rough or you take off 
too early, you lift your legs up too early or whatever. Um, so cost is huge. Uh, there's just a lot less moving parts on an electric paraglider. Another thing that really contributes to price is basically the frame. If you break apart on the frame too, um, with this electric paraglider, it's easy to unsnap. All you need is an Allen wrench to take the whole thing apart. And you just you can take it, if you break a little arm, you just take it off and you swap it. And it's super easy and cheap to replace arms and stuff like that, legs. Um, versus a gas paraglider, where if you like bend aluminum or you, they're usually more, they're all welded together versus this kind of just snaps and screws together. So that's another thing that really adds to the cost factor. Thanks for watching. I hope you guys are excited as I am about this project. On the next video, I'm going to go ahead and break down the components and the parts of the, this frame here. I'm um, kind of show you how it works, how it unfolds, stuff like that. So if you guys have any questions uh, pertaining to that, just leave them down below and I'll try to answer them in the next one. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, you guys have a great day. I don't know how to end it.